JWST continues to churn out incredible images and science, and today we can talk about something that it's done for the very first time, and an impressive record it's gone and broken. The telescope has just smashed the record for the lowest mass brown dwarf ever seen. These are objects that straddle the line between planet and star, and now we know of some new ones. We also have brand new images of a supernova remnant, a couple of intense jets coming from a star system, and this chaotic view towards the very centre of our galaxy. Let's start with the brown dwarf record. Nestled in a star cluster a thousand light years away, called IC348, JWST has found three incredibly low mass examples of these objects. Often called failed stars, brown dwarfs form in the same way as stars, that is, gravitational collapse of a cloud of dust and gas, but they never quite reach enough mass to ignite nuclear fusion in their core. Less mass means less energy in the core of the object, and in these cases there is never enough energy to force hydrogen atoms to combine. That's a process that would give out energy and cause the objects to ignite into a blazing star. You need a certain density threshold for this to happen though, and sadly in these cases there just wasn't enough, so they're living out their days as inert brown dwarfs, blurring the line between massive giant planet and tiny failed stars. The newly found brown dwarfs are each highlighted in this image, and they appear just as bright spots. This star cluster is relatively young at just 5 million years old, and so even the non-ignited brown dwarfs remain relatively bright in infrared light. You can think of this as the heat left over from their formation, and it's still enough for them to glow bright enough to be spotted by JWST. Each of these three brown dwarfs has a mass of less than eight times that of Jupiter, which sounds like a lot, but for stars that is tiny, with the smallest having just three Jupiters worth of mass. They also have surface temperatures ranging from 830 to 1500 degrees Celsius. In our quest to understand how small brown dwarfs can be, this is a fascinating discovery that lowers the threshold once again. The image we have here was taken with the near-infrared camera NERCAM on JWST and follow-up spectroscopy of interesting candidates in the brown dwarf search was done with the near-infrared spectrograph NERSPEC. This helped distinguish between two types of objects that both appear red, small, and blobby to JWST. That is, brown dwarfs and incredibly distant background galaxies. Two things that are very different, but can sometimes look similar. We don't want to be getting those things confused now, do we? The reason we're interested in brown dwarfs at all is because they can teach us about the formation process of stars, and here we're learning about the mass ranges that can and can't form those stars. Brown dwarfs also overlap with the largest gas giant exoplanets, but they're actually easier to study than exoplanets, since we don't have to deal with the bright glare from the planet's host star. Two of the low mass brown dwarfs here were also found to host unidentified hydrocarbon molecules. In the JWST data, we can see the signatures of molecules that contain both hydrogen and carbon. The Cassini mission has seen the same signatures on Saturn and its moon Titan, and it's also been found in the interstellar medium too. That's the gas between stars. On brown dwarfs though, we weren't expecting to find this signature, and our models don't predict it, so more research is definitely needed to really understand why we're seeing this with JWST. In the wide image itself, the wispy curtains that fill the image are made up of material in the interstellar medium reflecting the light from the cluster of stars. This means that it's simply known as a reflection nebula, but it's still beautiful. The material is made up of molecules called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, tasty chains that are pretty useful when trying to form life as well. The bright star closest to the centre is actually a pair of stars in a binary system. They're called type B stars, making them the most massive type of star in this cluster, and the stellar winds from these stars have helped form and carve out the interesting loops and other shapes we can see in this beautiful image. Next up, take a look at this colourful and chaotic image taken towards the centre of our Milky Way galaxy. It's a dense region of star formation. It's known as Sagittarius C, and it's being shown here in unprecedented detail. I have to be honest though, I find this image really stressful to look at. Most JWST images fill me with excitement and wonder and questions. This one though, it's so messy and all over the place, and it just tickles the anxious parts of my brain in just the wrong way. 
The colours and the details are beautiful, and if you disagree with my opinion of this image, then please argue with me in the comments down below. Something I do think is cool is that to me, this image represents the universe as a whole really well. It's messy and a bit chaotic, and although we try to understand it and simplify it with our theories and observations, it's hard for us to understand exactly what's going on all the time. And everything is really just a big mess, punctured by little pockets of order and beauty. Also, I can kind of make this light blue bit into Godzilla, so that's definitely a bonus for the image too. Whatever your opinion of it aesthetically, let's quickly discuss what it's actually showing us. This region of space is about 300 light years away from the Milky Way's central black hole, Sagittarius A star. The region of the black hole itself I don't think is shown in this image, but here it is imaged by the Event Horizon Telescope. In the new JWST image, there are an estimated half million stars present, including a cluster of protostars. These are stars that are still in the process of forming and gaining mass, and they're producing outflows of gas that glow brightly in infrared light. The star at the very centre of the cluster is a protostar that's more than 30 times more massive than our sun. Above the cluster, there's also a region so thick with dust and gas that it's blocking almost all of the light from reaching JWST. So we call this an infrared dark zone. This makes it look like an empty and less crowded area in the image, but really it's one of the most densely packed areas that we can see here. There are also similar but smaller dark clouds scattered throughout the image, looking like holes in the star field, and future stars are forming in these dark regions, meaning that one day bright lights will shine out of the darkness, and those holes will disappear. The cyan Godzilla region is where JWST saw ionised hydrogen, and this molecule is typically the result of high energy photons from young massive stars, smashing into hydrogen gas. But we actually saw more of this than we expected, so again, further work needs to be done to understand why this is. There are also these interesting needle-like structures visible in the cloud, giving some sense of order within the chaos. I have no idea what causes these, and again, we need to do further work to try and understand them better. From the centre of the galaxy to the dramatic scene of a powerful jet being blown off by a newborn star. This is a protostar called HH797, and it looks awesome. We're seeing high energy stellar winds and shockwaves coming off of the fledgling star in the centre of the image. These winds and gases collide with nearby gas and debris at high speeds, causing everything to glow, emitting infrared light that's picked up by JWST and gives us these stunning images. HH objects are becoming something of a regular target for the telescope, with this image of HH211 released in September 2023 as well, and this gorgeous shot of HH4647 released earlier in 2023 too. Interestingly, this new image of HH797 is very close to the star cluster that we started this video with, IC348, near the eastern edge of the Perseus cloud complex. We can also see further protostars in the upper reaches of the image, and a few bright Milky Way stars scattered throughout the image too. Lastly today, we have a brand new image of a stunning supernova remnant. This is the Cass A remnant, located 11,000 light years away in the constellation of Cassiopeia. It exploded about 340 years ago from our point of view, and it's a very popular target for space telescopes. We've seen it imaged by the Hubble Space Telescope, and even JWST has imaged it before, albeit in a different wavelength range. We've previously seen it imaged by the mid-infrared instrument MIRI, and now we're seeing it with NERCAM. The differences are pretty noticeable, and while NERCAM looks less colourful, it is much more detailed. Near-infrared light is a shorter wavelength than mid-infrared light, and this means that images tend to be higher resolution when they're taken in near-infrared light. Hence the upgrade we see here. Since we've covered a lot already in this video, I'll leave articles in the description that go through the image in full, but I will show you this image that contains a few highlights of what JWST is seeing, and we'll talk about what they are. Box number one shows tiny knots of gas that look like shattered glass. This gas is made up of oxygen, sulphur, neon and argon from the star that exploded. There are even some filaments of debris here that are too small to be resolved even by JWST, and this means that they're less than 16 billion kilometres in size. Of course, that sounds massive. But remember that this object is so far away that we can only see things that are still pretty big. In the mirror image, there's a structure here that's become known as the Green Monster. 
This monster is punctured with several holes, and while the green isn't visible in the NERCAM image, in box 2 we can see that these holes in mid-infrared light are accompanied and outlined by faint white and purple emission in the near-infrared. This again is ionised gas, likely glowing as supernova debris passes through it and heats it all up. Boxes 3 and 4 show similar things known as light echoes. These are actually clouds of more distant gas that were heated up by light and radiation from the original star, and now they're glowing as they cool down. Despite the fact that the star itself is now actually gone, hence the name Light Echo. A few of these echoes are shown in box 3, but box 4 shows an especially large one that's actually 170 light years behind the remnant. It's so large that it's been given a nickname, Baby Cassé, by the researchers. I'd love to hear all your thoughts on all of these JWST images and discoveries in the comments below, and leave me any questions you still have about any or all of these. And again, thanks for joining me in this video. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!